Hello people, in this video we want to look at the life cycle of Entamoeba histolytica. Do you remember where we are? We started off with uh, the amoeba parasitology. We looked at uh, what amoeba are. Then we saw there are so many types of amoeba in this world like Entamoeba histolytica is the most important one. You should know it is a pathogenic. Actually it is a commensal which can become pathogenic. Okay. Similarly, there are a lot of other pathogenic uh, amoeba like Niger uh, Nigleria, Fowleri, Acanth amoeba species, then you have Bala, Muthia, Mandrillaris, okay. So, so many uh, pathogenic are there. There are some commensals which are non-pathogenic also, which we have looked at the names in the last video. Now, let's move on. <clears throat> we saw the distribution and history it is found in humans usually asymptomatic and it is there worldwide it causes amoebic dysentery, amoebic liver abscess and also can cause a lot of deaths. The morphology of um, Entamoeba histolytica we have seen. This is the trophozoite form, this is the pre-cyst, this is the uninucleated cyst, this is the binucleated cyst and this is the quadrinucleated cyst. The cysts are formed when there is unfavorable environment. The quadrinucleated cyst is something which is the infective form. So the quadrinucleated cyst is the infective form. Remember, we have looked at all the details in the last video. So we are, we are not going into the details. Then, now the life cycle. Now what exactly happens to this inside us? You can see, we have consumed... Uh, this infective form that is quadrinucleate cyst has entered. Okay. Now this quadrinucleate cyst, hold on. Okay. This quadrinucleate cyst, guys, here, can you read it? It's difficult for you to read. Infective form, the quadrinucleate cyst. Correct. Let me zoom further. Wait. So the infective form of what? What are we studying? Entamoeba histolytica. So wake up if you are sleeping. We are discussing Entamoeba histolytica. It is what? It is a protozoan. It's an amoeba. Now somebody went and had some contaminated stuff and they got this quadriform, quadriform um, infective form, okay, into their stomach. Now in the stomach what happens? From the stomach in the duodenum, existation happens. In the small intestine, existation. So basically what was eaten was a cyst. Now it is coming out of the cyst, right? And then it becomes a metacyst. Then it becomes a trophozoid. Now it is back to its trophozoid form. The cyst is back into its trophozoid form. So between the cyst and the trophozoid, what you have? Metacyst. Okay. So now this trophozoid, what it will do? This trophozoid will reach the, from here, see from the, oh, this had to be changed. Wait. Yeah, now you look at it. So the trophozoid in the small intestine, what it will do? Now it will reach the large intestine. Okay, guys, pay attention here. See the trophozoite is here. It is reaching the large intestine. This is the ileocecal junction. Correct? Now what will happen here? This uh, trophozoite is causing this intestinal ulcer. In the large intestine, it is causing ulcer. From here, what happens? It can also enter the bloodstream and reach a lot of these organs like liver, lung, uh, brain, skin and all these extra intestinal amoebiasis will be caused. Correct? Further, now let us continue with intestinal amoebiasis. We are in the intestine. Now what happened? From here, from this where the trophozoit is, it is reaching here and now it wants to go in the feces. Remember, it wants to go in the feces. So what it will do? Again, it will become cyst. So encystation happens in the large intestine. In the small intestine, excystation happened. Did you, did you see that? In the small intestine, what happened? Existation happened. In the small intestine, existation happened. And in the large intestine, encystation. It's going back to cyst form. Now here, your what and all you can see? You can see pre-cyst, uninucleated cyst, binucleated cyst and tetranucleated cyst. Understood? Now what happens? This tetranucleated cyst is coming out in the feces, which is infected. So if somebody is uh, uh, eating contaminated food and they get the cyst, then they will also get intestinal amoebiasis, extra intestinal amoebiasis, all this amoebiasis they will get. Amoebic dysentery, they can suffer. 
they can also be trophozoites and feces this is seen in active infection okay yeah, this cyst will be there in carriers and in active infection okay so trophozoites there means it's active infection so this was the life cycle in a very brief okay about entamoeba histolytica however now we have to go into details from the textbook we have to look at all these uh, uh, extra intestinal amoebiasis also are you ready okay guys we are going into the life cycle of entamoeba histolytica details so basically there is only one host you already know this man right man is the only host all such points man is only host okay for entamoeba histolytica the infective form is what the mature quadrinucleate cyst you have to use these words mature quadrinucleate cyst so we have added this word here we had not added it earlier <clears throat> mature quadrinucleate cyst is the infective form going back where's the life cycle here okay so now we saw the infective form is mature quadri nucleate cyst mature quadri nucleate cyst okay mode of transmission man acquires infection by swallowing food and water contaminated with cyst so it is fecal oral route right mode of transmission is fecal oral route mode of trans mission is fecal oral root the cyst actually the cyst it uh, can survive in gastric acid okay cyst can survive in gastric acid so our gastric acid is absolutely useless in protecting us against entamoeba histolytica you understood right our stomach acids protect us from a lot of things but they cannot protect us from entamoeba histolytica the cyst can survive in gastric acid gastric juice right then what happens <clears throat> they reach the duodenum they reach the small intestine there excitation happens that you have already seen here correct so excitation excitation happens in the small intestine when the cyst reaches the cecum or lower part of the ileum the cyst wall is damaged by trypsin leading to excitation i don't understand here they are showing in the duodenum but here they are telling in the cecum uh, ileocecal region it happens hold on let's check the diagram again one one textbook says one one thing okay some people are saying the excitation happens in the ileocecal junction okay so who damages the cyst wall the trypsin the trypsin damages the cyst wall we will write that point then continuing the cytoplasm gets detached from the cyte, uh, cell uh, cyst wall and the amoeboid movements appear causing a tear in the wa cyst wall so the quadrinucleate amoeba is liberated this is called as metacyst what is metacyst the quadrinucleate amoeba they are calling it as quadrinucleate amoeba so many terms we have learned hold on let's write them okay it's written here excitation happens because of trypsin and this happens in the ileum these are some extra points then amoeboid movements happens inside the cyst because of which there is a tear in the cyst wall and whatever is released now that is called as quadrinucleate amoeba or metacyst okay then what happens now they will become trophozoites correct the metacyst now they become trophozoites look at this the metacysts they become trophozoites guys this excitation they happens they are saying it happens in the ileum so somewhere close to the cecum the excitation happens okay now what happens to this metacyst inside this metacyst the nuclei will be there they are undergo divisions how many nuclei were there four quadrinucleate it was right now four nuclei become eight nuclei and then each of them gets its own cytoplasm four nuclei becomes eight nuclei and each of them gets cytoplasm around it okay and um, eight small amoeba eight small amoeba or metacystic trophozoites are released eight small oh they are called as amoebulae amoebulae or metacystic trophozoites are released okay 
So eight nuclei, each gets cytoplasm, okay, and then eight small amoebulae or eight or metacystic trophozoites are released. Now then what happens? These go to cecum. Okay, cecum is a part of the large intestine. Now in cecum what happens? The optimal habitat, habitat for the metacystic trophozoid is the submucosal tissue of the cecum and colon. So they love this cecum, you know, they love this, this uh, submucosal tissue in the cecum, it loves. There what it will do, it will lodge in the granular, gra glandular crypts, okay. It loves the cecum, it loves the submucosal tissue of cecum. It loves the submucosal tissue of cecum. What it likes here? It lodges into the, it lodges, it lodges into the glandular crypts. Guys, wake up if you are sleeping. Crypts, I know it is kind of dull lecture. No, it's not dull lecture. It's nice lecture except that we are going very slow with it. Let's go a little fast then it will be nice. Okay, so it lodges into the glandular clip. So here you can see it came to the cecum and into the cecum it went. It loves this area into the subuco in the glandular crypts. It will go and lodge itself. Okay, and it will grow here by binary fission. It will start multiplying, right? It will grow here by binary fission. Some develop into pre-cystic forms and cysts which are passed into the feces that you already told. So in the feces you can see the cysts. Right. So some become what? Some become cysts. Some become cysts. And so in the feces you will have cysts and trophozoites. Now in most cases, entamoeba histolytica remains as commensal without causing any ill effects. Such persons, they become carriers or asymptomatic cyst passers and are responsible and for the maintenance and spread of this infection. So some people know what, they will not have any symptoms, but they will be carriers. So how do they call it as commensal? I don't know. I thought commensal should not be confused with a carrier. Anyways. So some people, they will be latent, this will become latent, asymptomatic, they can become carriers, okay. Later it can activate, latent means that only, right, then they can, can activate anytime in future, can activate in future. So if a person is passing only the cysts, right, if he's passing only the cysts in the feces, that means to say he could be a carrier. But if trophozoites are also there, it can mean that he's an active, he's an active infection, okay. So that's all we wanted to cover in the life cycle. Now next slide we will go to, will be the pathogenesis. Next slide we will go to. Pathogenesis and clinical features. Guys, this is also important. They will not just ask you life cycle. You will have to explain all this also. Okay. So come back in the next video. We will look at this better. Pathogenesis and clinical features of Entamoeba histolytica will be covered in the next video. Bye-bye.